Okay, I'm back. All right, so to add the charm, you're gonna open your chain, and you open your chain just like you open a jump ring, okay? To open a jump ring, you got a couple options. I'll show you another tool. My wonderful friend Renye got this for me, and I couldn't find them anywhere, and then after she sent it to me, I found them everywhere, it's so funny. You can find these at Joann's. Um, and this is a jump ring opener, and it's a tool. You just stick it on your finger and keep it on there like a ring. And then you can grab your jump ring, slide it in there, and you twist it, and you open your jump ring. You never want to spread them open, okay? You don't want to like spread it open like that. You always want to twist them. If you spread them open, you're going to compromise the metal, and it's not going to work out. and won't stay. If you don't want to get one of these, they're very cheap. They're a couple bucks. If you don't want to get one of these, um, you can get... You can you don't have to because they're not they're not a necessity. You just use this, but this is definitely great great to have because sometimes I can't get my finger in there with the charm how how big or small it is, and this I can. So what you do, I just close it. You grab it with your flat nose pliers like that. Grab it nice and sturdy. Grab it with your rounded portion of your other pliers and twist and open it like that. Okay. I'm going to leave that one open. And that's what you do with this chain, the same thing. You just take it like that. They all open, they all have a little opening. A little harder to maneuver. This would be hard to do with the ring. And you just twist. Put it on the thing and twist it back. Okay? Just add however much chain you want. I just have a little bit on here and that's fine. You can add it however much you want. And I just add the charms as I go down the chain. So, let's see, I'll show you, I'm doing, let's see, I'm going to do black and white, and all these beads I actually got at Joann's, and these came in a strand, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all these, I'm just getting out a variety of beads. Okay. I think this will probably be my focal point. I'm not sure because that's awfully big. I'm not sure about that yet. I might use my little thing that I made. Anyway, so I'm going to show you how to put it together. So first, grab your, depends on whatever size you want to work with. If you work with this big size, you just cut off what you don't need. If you work with a smaller size, and it's not big enough, take it off and use a bigger one. Okay, so let me see what we're going to do here. Which one? Maybe I'll do this one. Okay, I'll do that one. So, see how big that hole is? It'll just fall right through. You know, even with that little one on there, it might still fall through. It's catching. But what I'm going to do is put this big spacer on there and stop it. And then that one. And then I'm going to put another one on top. And that is a big glorious bead. I could probably stop right there. But I need to finish it off like it is on the bottom. That's my personal preference. That's how I like it. So I think that that is a pretty powerful bead all in its own. It's pretty big. So let's say I was happy with that and I wanted to stop right there. Okay? What I'm going to do is take my round nose pliers. I'm going to push it down all the way till this is nice and tight. Nice and tight. And bend it over 90 degree angle like that. Okay? Then I'm going to take it the length of my thumbnail. That's what I'm going to use to measure. And I'm going to cut that off because I don't need that much. Push it into your mat. Oh, the other tool. Gosh, I'm sorry. The other tool that you're going to need is this. This is really cheap. You get this at Joann's or Michael's too. This is a felt mat. Um, for jewelry because you know if you're not using it you're rolling all over the place with your beads they're rolling everywhere but they just stay put on this so definitely get this very very cheap and uh, must have along with these tools okay sorry about that so see how I'm holding it I'm holding it tight in the bottom with my middle finger and then with my thumb up there and it's still bent okay I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to twist it over and make a circle. 
Now, when I do the purse charms, I like to roll it over twice, at least twice, um, instead of just making a simple eye, okay? And I'll show you um, the difference here in a second. So, you're going to hold it like that. Then you're going to grab your plier. I like to twist my hand over with my palm up because then it lets me continually twist like this. If you do it like this, you just do one twist, stop, take it out, put it back in, and go over. And I'll show you how I do it. I'm going to grab it. And I want my eyes to be, my circles to be a little bit bigger. And that's what this uh, cone identifies. If you want it really big, go way down at the bottom. If you want it kind of medium, right there. Teeny tiny ones, right there. I do it probably about a third of the way down. And you grab it right at the tip. Oops. Grab it right at the tip. And twist it back towards where you started. And then loosen it up and grab it again and twist and twist. It's all in your wrist. Keep it on here. Don't take it off. You can, and you just put it right back on. It's no big deal. But if you keep it on there, you're keeping it at the same size. Otherwise, you're, you're going up and down on your cone, on your pliers, and it's changing the size of your ring. So keep twisting and twisting until you get it back to here. And there you go. And twist it as tight as you would like. And then just mess with it until you get it nice and straight. Sometimes it'll go a little crooked and that's okay. And this is loose in here. It's loose in here because this is a huge bead. They don't always wind up loose like that. But I'm okay with that because it's going to dangle, it's going to have some movement, and I'm okay with that. Okay? So there's the first little charm for the thing. And then when you're ready to, to put it all together, you would take your jump ring. Okay, I've already opened this one like I showed you. You take your jump ring, stick it through there, stick it on your chain, grab your other tool, and twist it together like that. There you go. I'm not sure if this is the way I'm going to keep it. I'm just putting it on there to show you. And then I'm going to take it off because it's driving me nuts. Because <laughs> I'm an old. I'm just going to leave my jump ring open on my mat like that. Okay? And I'm going to show you a different kind. The smaller kind. And these are a little thicker gauge um, pin. It's a little harder to work with, but. And I am going to use, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I don't know. I'll use that. I'll use that. Okay. Let's see what I want. Hmm. Not sure what I want to do here. Let's see. It's like a marble. Hemming and hawing. Hmm. Nope, not liking that. My pin's too small. I'm trying to show you how to do a smaller one, but I need beads that are gonna. You know what? I'll just use these metal ones just to show you. If I don't like it, I can just take it apart. Once you put it together, it's not the end of the world. You can take it apart as many times as you like. Just getting some more of my little metal beads. Hold on. Okay. Put a little ball. And a sparkly one. Nope, don't like that. I need a spacer. Then a sparkly one. Then a daisy spacer. And then I'll end it again with a ball bead. And that is a small little charm that will have a nice pop of black everywhere here where I need it. Okay? That's what I'm going to do with that one. So again, grab your brown nose pliers and pull it tight. Twist it 90 degree angle like that. Okay? And you're going to use your thumb, nail, okay, from your line, your cuticle here, line it up down there. See, I'm just visually lining it up, and then I would cut it. But what I'm going to do is I want to show you the difference between the eye and the twisting over. 
the eye just, you know what, I'm not, not going to do it on that one. I'm going to show you on this one. Okay. Pretend I have beads at the bottom here. Okay. The difference to doing eye is you would, you would leave less wire here and you would start probably halfway down and you would curl it back on itself one time. Okay. And then you get an eye that looks like this. Okay. And then you want to not drop your tool like I just did. <laughs> you want to make sure you close it all the way. Now that works, but I like to reinforce it with a few twists in it. Okay, because I think it just gives it more, it's, it's more sturdy. This is great for earrings, necklaces, things like that. Okay, for a simple eye like this. But for the charms that I put in a purse that are going to get tugged on and moved around a lot, I think they need to be more sturdy. But there's nothing wrong with this eye either. Um, if you choose to go that way, it's totally up to you. So, but that's the other option if you don't want to twist it over. I recommend the twisting. But if you just want to make like, oh my gosh, this would be, like this would be a super cute earring, wouldn't it? You would just do an eye on it and add it to an earring piece. You get those findings at Joann's too. I'll show you. Oh. Hold on. I like the fish hook ones. I like these earrings better. These ones I hate because I can't get them open and closed. I don't like these ones, but I do like those. So that would be a really cute earring. I might have to make some now. <laughs> but I would use this kind of loop if I made this into an earring. But since we're not doing that, and we are doing a purse charm, I am going to use my thumb as a guide and clip it off. And be careful when you clip this, sweetie, because they pop up. So try and get it down, stuck into your, your felt pad, and then cut it. If not, they're flying everywhere and it could hurt your eyes. So be careful. Okay, then use your middle finger, hold it tight, push it down with your thumb so that bead right there is staying nice and tight. Grab your wire and twist it back on itself. That's probably a little too big. If it's too big, move it on your thing and just twist it again. There we go. sometimes you get this this gets kind of sharp and you can kind of try and snip that off with your wire cutters if you can and that makes it a little bit better you can have a file too but I would just finagle it okay there it is so there's another charm for my thing and then I'll do one more show you the twisty turny stuff again hopefully that will help and you can get going and get your stuff for your friend and make something beautiful. Let's see, what am I going to do? I like these ones. These are cool looking. Huh, it's not going to work because it's falling through. I need my little tiny ones to stop it at the bottom. I'm going to start with a long one because I'm not sure how long this bead thing is going to go. Okay. Let's see what I like. I don't like that. Another little fat charm. Okay. Grab it. Pull it down so it's nice and tight. Put that totally down at the bottom. Completely flush with it and bend it over. Use your thumb as your guide. From your cuticle all the way to the end of your thumb. And snip it. Protect your eyes. 
Okay, there we go. Then hold it like that. Turn your palm up. Oops, a little too big. And twist it back. All in the wrist. Ta-da, done. Look how easy that is. How could you not want to make like billions of these? Instant, beautiful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. There you go. Okay, so, recap. Let's recap real quick. Tools you're gonna need, flat nose. Try the bead buddy to start off with. I think that's a good one to start off with. Round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, or flat nose pliers. I think, they'll, I think you'll see them called chain nose pliers. And then some rounded, um, some curved pliers. I don't know what they call them, but you'll see them. They're turned. You can see how that works. So those three, and then a good set of wire cutters. Okay, those are the tools that you're going to need. And then you need flathead pins, different sizes. You're going to need some very, very small. I wouldn't get the seed. The, here's the difference. Let me show you the difference with the seed beads. Where are my seed beads? Um, hey there. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. Teeny, tiny, tiny seed bead. Okay. See the difference? The seed beads are great for, for specific things, threading and things like that. But um, I would stay away from the seed beads when you're first starting out to make these charms. They're just too small. They don't really serve a big purpose for, for what you're trying to do here. And these are a bunch of seed beads. Ah, these are in the wrong spot. So anyway, um, we were recapping. Flathead pins. These small beads. You can get bigger ones too. It's up to you. Whatever you'd like. And then you're going to need some pretty spacers. We went through a few varieties, whichever ones you choose. Okay. I'm all over the place. And then you're going to need your clasps and your chain. And remember, this is the one I, I got. And if you feel comfortable going with what I do, then by all means, you can get the Blue Moon beads. Or the Blue Moon beads chain. Okay, that comes in this pack. I think that was $2.99 or $3.99. I can't remember. There's a lot of chain in there. And your tools. And then, of course, your beads, whatever variety you want. This is a cool strand. I, I like the strands that you can get at Joann's with the unique looking cool beads. And then you can add to them, you know, just look at their beads and find out what you like. And then if you're like, well, where am I going to store all this stuff? I store all of mine in these um, containers. Joanne had them on sale. These are 20, they're, um, there's 20 um, compartments in here. And they're, they're a good size um, for, for separating your beads. But um, I got this at joannes.com for $1.99, and I got a bunch of them. So you can separate them and keep yourself organized once you start buying more and making more. These are really, really great to have. So, um, and for $1.99 for um, storing this stuff, it, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't beat that. So, okay. So, and then again, if you'd like to get the bead caps, by all means, you can get some of those. Those are also sold by um, Blue Moons. Um, they have packs of different sizes. I think I got a pack. You'll see when you go. I think I got like, no, those, those were from... Those are from uh, Tara, my sweet friend Tara. Yeah, so I think it was like this variety, a pack of like three different sizes, teeny tiny, middle size, and then the bigger size. So they're good to have on hand, depends on the style for who you're working on. Okay, and then jump rings. Definitely get some jump rings. Remember the sizes, don't get them too small. You can get a variety of sizes and find out what you like. So I like the oval ones, I think they're, they're really cool. Um, but sometimes they might dangle too long, but these are always old faithful ones. So I would, whichever one you like, sweetie, doesn't matter. They're both great. And I think that's it. I think that's it. 
I think it's easier to start with um, doing the head pin type of charms. Um, later, if you'd like, you can also get some wire and you can do extending charms like the ones I was showing you here. Like, well, this one's on like a threaded kind of one. Let me see. This one. So this one I actually did on wire and let me get up here and see. See how that's wrapped right there? It's a different way of wrapping it and that is a very sturdy way of doing it. That is like the right way to do it. But um, that's if you want to have a charm and then extend another one. You can see how that one goes where I've got one dangling off the end. It's not just ended at the bottom. This one's ended at the bottom. But if you want to dangle several of them, that's great to do too. But when you're doing a purse charm, they're all dangling off, off of the chain. So you don't want to do one long continuous dangle of one because then it doesn't, the other ones don't lay right. I learned that the hard way. Okay? So, and here's another one that I made that I'll probably use on my black and white charm. How pretty is that? I like these beads. They add a lot of sparkle. And those you can get on those $2.99 and $3.99 um, bracelet charms I was telling you about at Joann's, Michael's, and uh, Walmart. You can get these these beads in there with those uh, Rondell spacers. Where is it? Where did it go? The ones like, here it is. It's right here. They come with these in the middle of them. And you can get a lot of bang for your buck with those sometimes. I mean, you know, you can get things cheaper when you buy them in bulk, but you know, you're just trying, trying it out, see if you like it. So I wouldn't buy a bunch of stuff in bulk, because if you don't like it, then you're stuck with it all. Okay? All right, so I hope that helped you. Let me know if you have any questions, and I want to see what you make. I want to see it. <laughs> I think it'll be gorgeous. All right, have fun with it. Let me know. Message me if I can help you anymore. Thanks.